Happy Little Landscapes back in the studio with you today. Welcome back to all you regulars and all you newcomers. Hey now, let's put some paint on our palettes, get our aprons out, and we're going to get ready to make a mess. So if you're ready to rock and roll, we're going to get started and we're going to do it just like this. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes back in the new studio. It's finally starting to look like home. Oh my God, I love it. Today we're going to be painting a 12 by 12 inch canvas, uh, this big giant cliff. This river that kind of cuts its way through the forest and ends up right down here at our feet. So you're obviously excited about painting this painting. But first things first, subscribe to my channel right down there. Click that big red button. Second, open up the description. You'll be able to find all the colors and the brushes that we use. Plus my Amazon storefront link down there so we can get all your supplies, right? If you need your micro fan, fan brushes or some little tiny liner brushes or more paint or canvases or an easel or you just you haven't even started painting yet, Click on that thing down there. I've listed everything that one might need in order to start oil painting, just like me, right? Come watch my videos and we'll get you painting just like that. So without any further ado, I'm so excited to be back uh, in front of the camera. It feels a little weird at first. We're filming from this angle today versus the video last Friday when uh, we were shooting from the other side. So you guys tell me what you like better, okay? Am I out of the way more over here? You know, does my hand get in the way? Is it better from the other side? I wish I could do it left-handed then it would not look anything like this, right? So I know you guys are excited. We're gonna stop blabbing on. We're gonna get to it and we're gonna do it with a big explosion and we're gonna do it just like this. Oh, look at that explosion, job hazard, right? So we decided to switch back for this video and we'll shoot from the right side where the canvas is on my right, the camera is on my right. You guys let me know in the comments below if you like this angle, if you like the other angle better. You can see I have some artwork hung up in the studio now. So. We're going to get started. We're going to try to do a picture. Let me show you what the picture looks like. Okay, but we're going to change it up. We're not going to do it, you know, the exact same colors. We're going to just sort of go crazy and make it up on our own because that's how we do all of our paintings, right? So this angle should be good, I would imagine, with my brush in here. We've got a little 12 by 12 inch canvas and only a limited color palette today with uh, sap green, dark sienna, phthalo blue. Uh, lizard and Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White, Bright Red, and uh, Indian Yellow. So today we're going to go with the one inch brush just because this canvas is a little bit smaller. You can expand it onto a bigger uh, canvas. I have all my brushes, the Bob Ross brushes, the micro liner brushes, the micro fan brushes, everything can be found on my Amazon influencer account, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? Now, you guys know how I like to paint my skies. We don't do just a regular blue old sky. Uh, but today, we're gonna um, sort of try to match this picture. So we're gonna go with a little bit of our, our thalo blue. I'll grab a little bit of crimson on there, but it's no big deal. And we're gonna come in here and just start laying down this thalo blue. I look at that color. I love this thalo blue for the sky. It's the brighter color of the blues. And the more and more we blend it, the lighter and lighter and lighter it gets down here by the horizon, which is what we want. We don't want it to be super dark blue down there. It's gonna be nice and light down by the horizon. It's gonna finish the edges, because we always finish the edges, right guys? Or I always say, come on, finish it for me. Finish the sides, right? You gotta finish the sides, because you never know if your buyer's gonna plan on, you know, hanging the painting coming down the stairs or down a hallway, and you don't wanna have these unfinished sides. That's what I say anyway. Like this, cover the edges. Bing, bang, boom. Get the top last. And we started off today by covering our canvas in Bob Ross liquid white. All right, you gotta have the liquid white on there if you want these oil paints to blend. If you don't have liquid white, you're gonna be in agony city, as Bob always said because they just don't blend like they should. All right, so you gotta have your liquid white on there. I grab a little bit of crimson up into the sky as well, just to give us a different color, right? Differences in color, guys. How many times am I saying that in every video? Difference in color. Then we're gonna take some of that blue sky, I'm gonna drop it down here on the bottom. A little bit of blue sky down here. Just a little blue sky. Okay, just very quickly we're gonna go over the centerpiece like this. 
over the center. It's going to be covered by a lot of stuff, so you don't really have to cover it with a whole ton of paint. You can see we left this area over here a little wider than the rest. Get our water back and forth. And this water is going to have a whole lot of reflections in it anyway, so you don't need to, you know, blend it out perfectly. It doesn't need to match the sky exactly. We're going to have a lot of reflections in there. And for those of you still keeping score, I still haven't gone and gotten myself a new easel. Just gonna, you know, just run it into the ground until it won't even hold a canvas anymore. Before I buy another one, right? Painter on a budget. That's how I see it. So we use uh, Jasco brush cleaner to clean our brushes with. And we've got an old beater bucket down here. I've showed it in many of my other videos. Looks a little bit like that. All nasty, right? Ugh. Got a golf ball basket down in the bottom of it, and that just gives me a surface to beat the brush on. So when you see me dip out of frame, we're cleaning our brushes, right? I normally cut a lot of that out of the videos. I <clears throat> don't want to keep you guys here all day, right? Okay, I'm gonna take, I like making my clouds with a palette knife. It just kind of deposits everything a little bit more randomly than a brush would. So we're gonna mix up our little shadowy color of uh, black, blue, and crimson. Don't need a whole lot. And for this one, let's say there's this giant cloud that lives over here. All right, just big messy, big messy cloud. I'm gonna scrape off a lot of that paint, right? Don't wanna leave a whole bunch on there. And I'm gonna show you why. The more and more we put on there, the harder and harder it is to blend away, right? So I'm gonna take my one inch brush, I'm just gonna start blending in this. If you keep blending it enough, we'll blend away into your sky and then you'll just have this darker colored sky in this section, right? So just very lightly, very gently make these little circles with our with our one inch brush. Little Josh patented circles, right? And just blend it out, leaving darker areas and lighter areas so you can have, you know, your depth in your cloud. You don't want it to be all the same color. Take our two inch brush and swipe that up to the top. Swap it to the top, and then we'll come to the side, right? And it just kind of blurs those clouds. And you can leave them just like that. You can leave them these dark, far off, shadowy clouds if you wanted to. But I like throwing tons of detail in, and you can never get more detail than in a nice, puffy, white cloud, right? So we're gonna take our knife again, and just very lightly, leaving some of those shadows in there, just gonna go through and just deposit this white paint, just randomly in different places, right? Because then when we go to blend it out, it's going to blend in different places and look like a realistic cloud. You can even take some of it, throw it down in there where we didn't even make a shadow, right? Over here. Doesn't matter. It does not matter. We're going to come in at the top corner of our brush, right? I'm just going to start mixing it up very lightly. I'm not trying to blend it away, I'm not trying to make all the white disappear. Just very lightly mixing it. And that way we're gonna have lighter areas and darker areas of our clouds. And then we're gonna come and do the same thing. Go swipe up, just like that, very lightly. Just using the very outer bristles of our brush, right? Come to the side, same thing, very lightly. Now we've got this cloud that's got brighter areas and darker areas and little bits where the light is hitting it. And if you ever wanted it brighter in a certain spot or more over here or there, just go back in, same thing. Don't over mix. Just swipe it up, come to the side. All right? However you want your cloud to look is how it's gonna look. Get that black, a little bit of that black and gray mixture just so it's a little different color, not as dark as this other one down here underneath that guy. A little bit of darkness, that's all. But again, don't want to do it too much or it will disappear, trust me. Done it before and then you got to start over. I'm trying to teach you guys the lessons I have already learned from doing this too many times, right? All right, I think we got a good looking, good looking little bit of cloud up here. I actually want it to be a bit brighter. Put this one in front of that other one. Right. Just keep going until you like the way that it looks. Doesn't have to look like mine. Just keep going. I'm just showing you guys how I make them, right? 
If you like my skies or you like how my paintings look, then do it the way that I do it, right? All right, let's come in and we're gonna make up some mountain here. Never painted this painting before. Kind of recreate that picture I showed you guys in the beginning of the video. So if you scroll past that, you can always go back or you can wait till the end and then we'll show it to you at the end. All right, but I wanna make two different bits of mountain. So I'm gonna take one of my piles of blue, black, and crimson and I'm gonna mix it with the white just to be a little bit lighter colored than if I weren't to do that, right? So it's a little bit lighter gray color. And then I'm gonna get a little bit, don't need a whole lot. A little bit darker pile for my mountain that's gonna be a little bit closer. Okay, now let's do the closer one first, just because it's gonna look weird if we don't, right? Let me come up like this, and we'll come down. And then it sort of flattens out, and then we got this bit where it just falls down in front of this cloud. All right, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to pull down from my top, and just sort of deposit that thicker paint in all those little areas. You can scrape it down, right? And that way when we go to start pulling it out, we're going to have shadows in certain places. And it's just going to do it all on its own for us naturally. Don't have to mess about with it too much, right? So just different places, we want to block in that color, okay? Now this next one, it's going to come out from the side and it's going to go off into the distance, right? We're going to pull straight down like this. And then once we get to a certain spot, then it's going to come the other way. There's like a little hill right there, right? And we'll be able to see it when we go to uh, start pulling it out. And we'll leave a darker black line over here just to kind of separate these mountains. Push one behind the other, right? So for this one here, I'm gonna come down, we're gonna pull down, we're gonna sort of come down and pull down like that, make a little angle. Right, straight down over to the side. Don't worry about what's over here. It's not really important. <clears throat> then we're gonna make some fog down around the bottom of this guy. That just helps kind of spread the paint around so we can put more stuff in front of it, right? You get this thing where it's real thick and textured, it's gonna be hard to get your, your mountain to look right. Come over here, you take this guy, pull him straight down. Maybe he comes over a little bit like this. Right. Pull this guy down like that. And you see we get all these different shadowy colors inside of our, our up close mountain, just from dropping all those colors in at random, right? And take this guy, it's got a little couple little trees off the end. So we're just gonna lift straight up on those trees like that and it'll give it this, you know, little heartbeat monitor look off to the side. Well, we mix up the bottom here, mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. So we got this fog in the back. You can go as high as you want on your fog. I'm not going too high on mine. I like that. And why don't we grab some of this paint and we'll just jump in front of you guys real quick and just finish the sides, right? Because we gotta finish the sides, guys. You can see why we put our clouds in first. You don't wanna try to do this and then go back and put your clouds in afterwards. It's very difficult to do. All right, got our little bit of a darker mountain. Pulling it straight down, then we're going to have some reflections down underneath and everything else. So we can go like this. And we can just make our mountain this way. Just leaving a little bit of room in, the, in between. A little bit of room in between and then we can go in and we can just fog up this whole area. It's like that. That way we can't tell where the the land is, where the water begins, where the reflections begin. It's all in this fog in here. Alright. Now it looks as though maybe there's a little bit of brown on these mountains back there. 
So we're not gonna make it too dark because the dark the closer we get, the darker it's gonna become. All right, and then maybe back here, we can just drop in a couple little little bits of brown color. All the way back there. Same thing, pulling straight down, and then we're gonna angle it down this way. Angle it down, angle it down. Watch our edge right here, right? Take our two inch brush in the same way that it was, that we, that we laid it down, right? And then we can come back in and just fog up that area. Now we got a little bit of texture right along the top there. And then this side over here is going to be covered, so don't worry about that. Well, we got a couple trees growing way off in the distance, got our texture there. And then why don't we come in, we'll, we'll do our, our shadows first on this one, on the one in front here. Since it's closer, it's going to have a lot more detail, right? And I'm always telling you guys to do the shadows first, so let's do the shadows first, right? A lot of that's going to be in the sun, so let's just quickly drop down. You want to do it fast, right? Get a good amount of paint onto your knife, and then come in and do it quickly, and that way it will break in different places all throughout this mountain. A cliff. We call it a cliff, I guess. Alright, you want it to break, so pull it fast. If you go slow, it's not going to break for you. Right, pull it fast all the way down. You can do a couple down here. If we go upwards. Upwards, downwards, doesn't matter. We're going to fog it all up, right? And we'll come in, we'll grab some of that white, some more of that brown, and mix it up. And this one's going to be a lot darker brown than the one up there. You can even take some of our dark mixture and throw it in there just to give it this different flavor, right? Different color than the brown back there. You can throw a little bit of red and the sap green in if you need some extra brown. You can throw a little bit of this red in there. It doesn't matter, man. Just want a good pile of paint. Ooh, this nice deep, like reddish brownish color. It looks amazing. Okay, we're gonna pull it out flat. Get a big chunk here. And come in and same thing, just go over our shadows. You just don't want to overdo it. I ain't gonna leave some of those shadows in there. This one's even a little bit brighter. Maybe we could put some white over here and that'll really make the sun hit on this side, right? Just like so. All the way down again. We're not covering up all the shadows. Then we've got this different depth in our mountain, right? Come down, make sure we get the top. Stay along our lines, right? Take a bit of that white and put it in here in different places. Like the sun is just catching it at certain points, right? Not too crazy. Don't want to get too nuts with it. Get too crazy with it, and then you're going to have to start over. And you'll be like, Josh, your technique didn't work. And you're like, well, what happened? And you're like, well, I was doing this, or I did that too many times. This didn't end up looking like yours. Which again, yours does not have to look like mine, right? I'm just showing you guys techniques about, you know, how I like to do it. Just showing you some techniques. I love a good bit of shadow in mine. So we're gonna take some of that dark color, just a straight black. Just put it in in random places and drop our palette knife in the process. So you gotta hold this knife so softly that you can end up dropping the sucker. And I have done it on numerous occasions. There we go. Look at that. Nice looking little deal. And what are we gonna do next, guys? 
Let's make up some more of that tree color with our three favorite colors here, the black, the blue, and the crimson. Throw some of that green in there. I'm only gonna need a little bit of green to help highlight the trees. So as long as we can get some of this in there, then we're gonna be in good shape. It's gonna be a little bit different color than the rest. And we wanna come in and fog this area up, right? And they have a fair amount of trees in the front of it, so. Want to mix this up so it's nice and foggy. Get our reflection down there. That way we can add some trees in front. Always got to be thinking about the next step, right? All right, let's get some of this over here. And it looks like there's a couple bits of tree that live over here in the distance. We're just going to put them in just like this. Okay, there's another bit. Now that we've got a little bit of lighter paint on there, it comes over. Let me switch back to our darker color. And all we're doing is just putting some base back there. These trees that live over here, a little bit closer to us and then our reflections down into the water, right? Which is again, why I said, it doesn't really matter on your water down here at the bottom because we've got so many trees in this one. All right, let's start pulling out our land. So this guy lives back here. And these guys will come down. And just go to the side, right? Just very, just a couple times is all you need. Otherwise you're gonna get rid of all those trees, right? Let's see. Like that. Let me come in. We can put a bit of land underneath here. Underneath these trees, like so. I hate this thing for small. over this way with a different bit of land. These small canvases, they don't like this easel. Let's go like that. Whoop, hello, about lost it. Saved it, you guys. Now we're gonna cut in our water lines back here. Cut that a little bit. We're gonna come back in again, mix it with some white and brown. Right. Might actually have to go back in and get some more. Not gonna over mix it. Just gonna pull it out, cut it, and we're gonna come over like this, right? And again, we're leaving darker areas and lighter areas. They don't all have to be the same. Does not have to look the same across anything. There's like a bigger rock that lives up here. And it comes down that way. Got it over here for the buyer. And we're not being super detailed on our, get this guy come down a little bit more, on our beach or anything. Come down a little bit more even. So don't worry about, you know, being super detailed. We want that bit to be behind there. This one to come out a little bit further and that's pretty much it. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. We'll take our knife and just sort of start cutting in some waterline. Just nice and easy. Doesn't need to be the same. Doesn't have to look, you know, symmetrical. Just want to cut in the waterline. That's it. And that way we can tell where, you know, the water ends, where the land ends, where the water begins. Just cut in a bit of waterline. A little, couple of rapids out here. Just make sure they're straight. It's the biggest part about painting your water lines. You start doing them on an angle like this and it looks like your, your water's falling off the edge of the earth. And a little bit of green tinge over here on this side. Just a little bit of green. 
mix it in with that dark color. And that way it's a difference in color, guys, and your eye will pick it up. Your buyer is going to notice it. Actually, it looks really neat. I like the way that looks. Now we're going to come back and make up some more of that tree color. Throw the red in there too. We're only going to use the red and the and the yellow for a few little highlights and stuff. So we might as well mix it into this big pile of paint, right? Like that. Now we're gonna come back here. We're gonna make these giant trees that live over here. They're kind of closer to us than those other ones are. They live right down here on the beach. I only use this big brush for this one over here. Gonna come down. I guess we could use it on this guy too. Like that. Always want to do the corner of your brush, right? Just the, the very corner. And then the further you get down, the more you can push in. Using more of your bristles, right? careful back here on this stuff where we have all this green and everything behind. You don't want to start making mud, right? So we're just barely touching whatever touch, whatever sticks is going to stick. Don't have to do anything, you know, to keep working at it, the more mud you're going to make, okay? <clears throat> Which is why we start doing that fog and we do everything else with our trees to try to make it so, you know, we can add paint on top of that layer. Since we're over on this side, if you guys don't have these micro fan brushes or the micro liner brushes, you should probably get some. You can find them in my Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And they are amazing. All right, they're from a company, what's the, I think it's called Nick Pro is the company. You can find them on my Amazon page. And uh, they just get in there and just give you these little, real tiny little details that would be harder to do with a, you know, a bigger brush, which is why I love these little brushes. And if you're doing just a normal size tree, you know, if we had a bigger tree or a bigger canvas, this gives you more little bristles, you know, more little branches, more details than you could work with with your bigger brush, which is why I like these little brushes. I'm all about details. So if you want details and you want a bunch of little branches in your trees, and you stick with this little mini fan brush, micro fan brush, and you will be in heaven. Look at that. A couple little bits, bing, bang, boom. What I want to do is add a couple little tree trunks on these trees back here. So we're going to mix the white and brown again. Come back, and maybe there. There's another one. That lives back in there. We've got this guy here. Just at the bottom. That guy you can't really see, so maybe there's one back there in the distance. And we'll come back in and just take the bottom of that little branch, whatever's on your land, and just pull it back down. Like so. Just like thunk. A bit of this black because you guys know how I love my shadows and stuff. Look like a couple little little extra rocks on the beach over there. And what I like doing is taking and cutting in a little bit of black right above my, my white water line. It just gives it a little bit more depth. A little bit more depth in there. Come back in. You should have done it before, but you know, we're all about making mistakes over here. Mistakes, happy little accidents, it's all the same. All right, we make a mess around here at Happy Little Landscapes. And I appreciate every one of you guys that 
likes my videos and comments and follows me and tries my tutorials. Love you guys for that. All right, we got our trees over here. And why don't we come back? We'll just take the last of our dark paint. Just grab the last of it. I hope we don't have to go back for more. That would be an amateur move, Josh. We've got to go back for more paint. All right, we got that there. Come in, just make a couple more little trees over here on this side. Kind of stand out from the rest. And this is the best part about painting to me. Like, we came in with an idea. Now my idea looks a little bit different than, you know, what the photo looks like. But that's the fun part about painting to me, is you don't have to follow the photo exactly. You could see something that your brush did, and you're like, oh, I need to, you know, I, that would look cool, or we could do that, or it would look neat if, you know, there was a bit over here, or whatever. And you just do it. That's the best part about painting. You make up your own deal. Don't have to rely on anybody. You just do your own thing, man. Some more of that. I'm going to show you guys where these trees live right here with this green and white. Right, we got one over here. Let's do a little line like that. And again, we're not covering everything. I don't need them to be super detailed. Wipe off that dark. Every time you touch the, every time you touch that big dark thick paint, it's going to start to adhere to your brush. So every so often, go back, wipe it off, and then come back in. So I try to do a whole tree just with one side of the brush, and then you can flip it over, and you've got this whole other bit of paint that's ready to stick. There we go. Do it however you want. I always like to say, your way is the right way, right? Don't have to follow anybody else. Don't have to you know, do anything nuts. However you get it to work is how you get it to work. Put a couple little tree trunks back in here. Different places where we can't see the trees back there. There's a bit over there, there's a bit over there, and then the forest kind of hides everything for us, right? Over there, maybe there's a chunk. Get a tree trunk in there. Get a tree trunk in there. <laughs> However you want to do it, man. Let's take the last of this. And we'll come in just sideways and make a little bit of, uh, like, brush at the bottom of these trees, right? You can even do it on this side, too. Just a little bit of texture, a little bit of brush, a little bit of grass. You're, like I said, your mind will make up what it thinks it is. Always continue to play with it until you like the way that it looks, right? If you don't like it, how's anyone else gonna like it? Let's see here. How many times can I drop my palette knife is the question. Let's put a big boulder in the water over here. You guys know me, you know I like my up-close rocks them in a lot of paintings. All right, just a weird shape. I don't want it to be, you know, this perfect triangle. I'm just kind of make it up. Make a weird shape. And we come back in and we can just cut in some water around it. Just like that. Take that brown and white, and we'll just come in and just make a, just on the one side though. I'm gonna leave some of it dark, right? Gotta have shadows in there. Can't just do it all one color. Come in, a little bit of dark in there. Just right above that water line, give us a little bit of depth, right? Looking good to me, guys. Looking good. Now, what 
else can we do? You guys know me, and you know I love my my details and stuff. So what else can we do to add something else to this painting here? Doesn't really need much, but we could add something. Let me add like a big bit of bare tree lives down in there too. Just by dragging, just scooping it up on the knife, right? And I'm just dragging it down. Whatever sticks is gonna stick. Don't worry about it. Let me do one in front of this tree like that. Just kind of push that tree back a little bit. Got all these bits of sticks. All right, sticks, tree trunks, branches, all throughout this thing. In front of the trees, behind the trees, the bottom of the trees. I'll just get these big sticks like that. And there. Get a little bit of tree branch on that sucker. And these guys have to come down in front of our trees behind them, right? Kind of push them back a little bit. So this guy maybe lives down on the beach. Sort of give him a bit of a dark side, bit of a lighter side, get a couple branches off of him. And that way it'll push it back behind there. There we go. They don't all have to be the same. Put your branches going off certain ways, other ways, doesn't matter to me. Takes a bunch of dead, dry trees, pushes those live trees back behind there. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty good, if you ask me. Just going over these a few more times, get a couple of little more branches in there. And then we gotta remember just finish off the bottom. And just by kind of pulling those out a little bit. Scooping up some of that dark color, dropping it in random places. This nature is just one big mess, you guys. It really is one big mess. I like the way that came out though, it looks really good. It's pretty good. Get this tree over here for the buyer. So if you guys want to know what it looks like on the side, you're gonna have to buy it. This tree over here. This must be a short one. 37 minutes, that's not bad. Well, just like that guys, we created a little 12 by 12 scene. Uh, looks fairly close to what the picture was that I showed you guys in the beginning. And, uh, you know, did it Josh's way. So if you, like, if you like doing that, if you can create one like this, I'd love to see it. Send it into my Facebook page. You can find me on Facebook if you search at, uh, at Happy Landscape Art. Or go to my Instagram, at Happy Little Landscapes. YouTube, at Happy Little Landscapes. You can get all your supplies at amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and you can buy this painting or any of my other paintings or t-shirts or hats or aprons or anything at etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art okay glad you guys stuck with me let me know if you like this angle versus the other angle we were at right where it was over there and uh write it in the comments leave me a comment and if you do this one please send it in i'd love to see them so you guys take a <laughs> take care and uh, have a good day, and we're going to see you guys on the next painting. Bow! All right, no more dead.
dicking around here. Hey guys. Hey. Hey guys. <laughs> Big daunting cliffs thick forest around a river that cuts through and just turns into this big, you know, expansive. But first, hit that subscribe button right down there. Hit that subscribe button. So check the description below, but first, first, hit that subscribe button down there. Let's get rocking and rolling, and we're gonna hop to it, and we're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys. <clears throat> hey guys, Josh, happy to the landscape's right. But first, check the description, hit subscribe down there, and then uh, get the description. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again today. Welcome back, new studio, artwork up, brand new painting. Uh, we're gonna be knocking them out. Uh, so, again, perfect for you, right? And uh, we're gonna get started. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, welcome back to the new studio. All this brand new artwork, including, haha, this one right here. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again in the new studio, right? Got some, finally got some artwork up on the wall. This river that kind of cuts its way through the forest and ends up right down here at our feet. So if you want to paint 